Hello, Ace and Fire Nerds. This is Chris, and welcome back to another Game of Thrones Season 7 slash 8 video, I believe. I just had something kind of pop in my head as far as this bittersweet ending that George R. R. Martin keeps promising us. What does that actually mean? Dracarys. I've been thinking a little bit about this as far as uh, the ending of this whole damn thing. Ever since we did the Dragon Raised by Wolf series, you can check that out on my channel. We go into some detail in four parts about various events in the world of Ice and Fire and how that may give us some clues as to the ending of this damn thing. But I actually just thought of a simple concept, and I think I've probably seen it mentioned before, so I'm certainly not going to pretend it's originally mine. But what if this so-called bittersweet ending is just a little bit simpler than that in the sense that Maybe we do have a pretty standard story in front of us where, you know, the good guys eventually do win. They defeat the White Walkers and push them back, and there is a hope. There is a dream of spring, so to speak. Or at least uh, come to some pact or whatever because we know that George R. R. Martin doesn't write good and bad characters. But there are clearly good guys in this story that just have flaws, and clearly what we would consider bad guys that just have good intent for some other reason. For example, the White Walkers. We don't know what they're really after. All we do know from our perspective so far is they're doing terrible shit, but the point being that we don't really know their point of view. We don't know what they're really after. Maybe in their eyes, they are the heroes of this story. Of course, that's the whole point with George R. R. Martin and his writing. Then, of course, we have people like Jon Snow, who seems to be a relatively good guy, and he makes mistakes, and he's flawed. And the same thing was Ned before him. Of course, Ned was very, very honorable, but he did make mistakes, and he did do things to protect his family that were considered dishonorable. Of course, that would be lying about Jon Snow, lying to his own wife and family. But, of course, he did those things for very good reason, to protect Jon Snow for one. And, of course, he had promised Lyanna his sister. And once he makes a promise, he does not break it no matter what. So, essentially, characters like Ned and Jon and some of the good guys in our story try to do the right thing, but they're not always able to. And the White Walkers, of course, we see as the bad kind of thing, but we don't really know their intentions in the first place. But what if this bittersweet ending is something a little bit simpler than that? Let's say that the White Walkers are pushed back, they are defeated, or they come to some compromise when we find out what their actual motivations are. But the world is essentially saved. We move on to a new era. Whether some of our favorite characters die or not is a different story, but the point being this, let's say it's a pretty straightforward ending. There's a pact form, the White Walkers are pushed back, they're defeated, whatever it may be, and people have a chance to start over and live happily ever after if they choose to do so, if they believe in change as far as changing the system from a feudalistic type society to a more democratic style society. But what if the simple bittersweet ending is this? What if Jon Snow never finds out who he actually is? Now for us as an audience, that would be bittersweet as hell because the point being that we've been fed information relating to R plus L equals J. And yes, I know there's still a few doubters out there about R plus L equals J because people don't believe they really confirmed Rhaegar. Although, of course, in the show they did because they talked him up so much. In the books, Ned really respects Rhaegar when he thinks about him. So I think that's pretty much a settled issue. and That may be a separate video altogether. But the point being, what if John himself never finds out who he really is? And does that really matter? It may not matter to the story. He may live. He may die. He may save the world. He may bring people together to save the world and not actually do it himself, being the prince that was promised, the Zora High, the last hero, whatever you want to call it. But what if he actually never finds out who his mother is or his parents in general? And really, if you think about it, that's all he's ever wanted to know. Before he went to the wall, he talked to Ned. He was like, who is my mother? Is she still alive? Does she care about me? Does she know where I'm going? And he promised to talk to him about his mother the next time they saw each other. But of course, he was never able to do that because by the time he got to King's Landing, he got caught up with the Lannisters and Joffrey becoming king and all that kind of stuff. He got his damn head chopped off. But how could that actually happen? I and mean, we do have Hallen Reed, who supposedly is alive and well, and he's the only survivor of the Tower of Joy that we know of. Perhaps we have a wet nurse like Wyla still being alive somewhere in Starfall. So we do expect someone like Hallen Reed to show up and simply tell John. But maybe he never has the chance. Maybe Helen Reed dies right before he gets to John. Similar to the way Bran was very close to John several times in the show, where he was just within 15 or 20 yards of him, but he never actually got to make contact with him. And of course, in the show, we know Bran knows now due to his vision of the Tower of Joy, but perhaps Bran never gets a chance to tell John as well. You know, I'd mentioned that what if magic goes away at the end of this thing and all this stuff goes down before Bran has a chance to tell him? And Bran perhaps has to die for some reason because magic goes away because I think this does have to end in balance either way. So the point being here that there's only a few options that we have to get John this information. That is through Bran or Hall and Reed or both. And perhaps there's a small chance of something being at the Citadel that Sam could possibly find out. And there's certainly an opportunity there too. Something could happen to Sam on the way to John. Something can happen to John for that matter. You know, before Hall and Reed or Bran or Sam or the combination of two or three of them ever get to John to let him know who he was before he dies. Perhaps he gets sacrificed not ever knowing who his parents were. 
Now, I will say that personally, I don't necessarily buy this. I do believe he will find out because that sure is a hell of a lot of buildup for him to never find out. But that damn sure would be a bittersweet ending because in our eyes, we're sitting there going, you know, please tell him, Bran, you know, or Helen Reed or somebody come fucking tell him. And for me personally, no matter what happens after that, I'm fine with it. But the point being here that George R. R. Martin would do a thing like that where he never finds out. And of course, that would be pretty damn bitter. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think the bittersweet ending means to you? And how does that affect his life from that point forward if he lives at all? Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, thank you for all the support. And especially to you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my Patreon executive smokescreen producers, Hall Griffin, Ball Guy 10, Marilyn Bentley, Kisa Powell, Joanna, Sean Hayes, and Mark Joseph, a.k.a. The Snow and Winterfell. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone out there in YouTube land for all the support. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. And make sure you click that notification bell to know when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, you guys. And we'll see you next time.